Hi there, I'm Nina Bosky for Classic Movie Hub. And this week we celebrate the legacy and life of Marilyn Monroe. It is the 60th anniversary of the star's death this year. And I started asking myself a question, who is Marilyn? Who is Marilyn Monroe? There's books out there, still more coming. There's a docu-series out there about her. There's a film coming out about her. You never can get enough of Marilyn. But who is she? So I thought, who could I ask this question to? Person who came to mind is one of the most generous, supportive, love of Marilyn people I know. He is the president and founding member of the longest Marilyn Monroe fan club, Mr. Greg Schreiner. Welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to be with you today very much. Well, you and I have talked a lot over the, the past probably decade at this point because we've known each other quite a long time now. And when I was really thinking about who can I interview to really answer that question, you were the first person that came to mind. Well, and thank you. I, I, I never met her, as you know, but I feel like I've gotten to really know her through all of the, the many guests that we've had over the years at the meetings who knew her. Uh, I, I regret I didn't get to, to meet her in person, but I was a little boy when she died. So, uh, and I was back in Illinois, so it wouldn't have happened. But it's amazing how I, I feel like her presence is really a part of my life anyway, par partly because my home is full of things she owned. But beyond that, just all the people that we've been able to interview over the years. So in answering this question today, and it's a, in some ways it's a, it's a complex question. And I know even in my own efforts of trying to figure out who is Marilyn Monroe myself, uh, I've come to find that she's, you can't put her in a box. So how would you describe Marilyn? Wow. That's the, the, the really big question, isn't it? Um, She's such a multifaceted woman, which I think is part of her appeal, that uh, she had so many dimensions to her personality and, and so many interesting things about her life. But what I'm taken away with, first off, is that everybody that I've ever met absolutely adored her. They, they loved her, they, they, they fell in love with her in a sense, and, and were still profoundly affected by her death many decades after her death. Um, so she obviously had something special going on inside of her that really affected people. And I think there was, it was a genuineness about her, a realness about her, and a personality that was so appealing. Uh, everybody just, were, were, they were drawn to her because she was such an interesting, love, loving person. Um, she really was generous. I remember that Evelyn Moriarty was her stand-in for some of her last movies, and she would say that, that if anyone mentioned anything about loving something Marilyn was wearing, the next day it would be at their door in a package. You know, Marilyn would just give it to them then. She, that's, that's the kind of generous spirit she had, and, and I think that off the bat is, is appealing. Uh, and then couple that with a magnetic personality and and stunning looks and and all the talent that she exuded um, on the screen and that's that's a package that's hard to duplicate uh, and lots of people have tried and, and no one has come close to duplicating that not even close i no. mean if you think about it you know, I sometimes have young interns working with me and I'll mention old Hollywood stars because I'm, I'm in love with old Hollywood. And I'll say something like, you know, do you know Tony Curtis? And they'll go, huh? Oh, you know Clark Gable? No. You know Marilyn Monroe? Yes. You can be six or 96. Everybody knows Marilyn. I know. I love that about it. But she has survived beyond any other star I think that's ever been in Hollywood. And uh, it's, it's exciting for me to, that that is happening. And we're actually hoping um, in the next year or two to have an entire exhibit on Marilyn at the new Motion Picture Academy Museum. Wow. To honor her because I think it's long overdue. The Academy never honored her during her lifetime. So it's time they did. And I think it would be a huge exhibit, one that would be very, very 
um, crowd gr uh, appealing to everyone. Well, you know, you you really, when you think about it, in terms of even auctioning off some of her stuff today, have it on exhibit. I mean, it's such a draw and so many people, you know, from Mariah Carey to you to so many people have have collected Marilyn over the years. You don't hear that a lot about some of the the other stars that have have gone. And and unless you're a true old Hollywood fan, you may not know some of these old Hollywood favorites. What drew you to Marilyn? You were a little boy when she passed. So what what drew you to her? Well, I remember my initial this is the memory I have in my brain is that that my parents took me to a drive-in theater, if you remember those, back then, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, in Monroe, Wisconsin. Wow. I know, how ironic is that? Uh, and the movie was Some Like It Hot. No, yes, the movie was Some Like It Hot. And I was transfixed when she came on the screen. I just couldn't believe how beautiful she was. And even as a small boy, I, I knew that she was special and no one looked like her where I lived. <laughs> and, uh, I, I just was fascinated and there was, wasn't a lot to find out about her then because there weren't any books really on her at that point. Um, mainly magazine articles. I tried to get whatever I could or pictures. And then as I got older, I started collecting more and a few books came out on her. And I kept going and going to finally moving to Los Angeles where of course Suddenly I had the whole world at my fingertips as far as people who knew her and the club brought in so many people and suddenly she was like my whole life in a way. She's always has been, but really a major part of my life. Thank God. It is a hard life because, and I even say more so now because of all the social media and the invasion of everything. But even back then, you know, it was a mob wherever oh, she, where she went. I mean, she was just inundated with people. And that's got to be a little difficult after a while to, to never be able to go anywhere without being mobbed. Um, it makes you, yeah, less likely to be able to go out in the world and enjoy your just enjoy yourself yeah very much so you know one of the things though that i would like to ask you because it's something that i do believe about her uh i think she was a deep soul and what i mean by that is sometimes in the tabloids and stuff they they make up stuff that she wrote things that it just doesn't even sound like her writing right when you look at her poems and some of the things that she's written um what would you say to that? Do you do you agree, disagree? What do you, what is your feeling? I feel like she was a seeker, not just of knowledge, but kind of meaning behind things. Do you do you see that at all? Absolutely. I I think she herself was always trying to uh, really go to the depths of, as far as she could, and I think that's one reason so many people were attracted to her because they saw in her so much more than just the superficial that we see in the films. There was this great depth to her her personality and to her, her soul, a uh, very wonderful soul there. And um, yeah, I would totally agree with that. And, yeah, and, and who knew back in 1982 when you first started Marilyn Remembered that she would even have this kind of longevity and actually in some ways just as much if not more popular today because there's now more and more people that know about her. Uh, what made you say, you know what, I'm going to start this fan club. You know, I, I think also back in that time, and I think people need to understand, you know, she wasn't just a wallflower that just slept around as people say, oh, she slept her way to the top. No, she didn't. She actually really worked hard at her craft. And in some of the, the areas with these studio heads, she would stand up to them as well. And I thought, wow, you know, that's not the dingy dumb blonde. That's somebody that says, hey, you know what? I, I deserve here and you're not going to treat me this way. Well, I think what did it is I, I thought about her and how special she was and realized that there was no fan club for her at that point. Um, and no one had done a memorial service for her ever. And I thought, well, it's time we did some of these things. So the club was founded initially just to do a memorial service for her every year. But beyond that, we realized we were having too much fun getting together and sharing our love of Marilyn. So we thought, let's do a monthly meeting, which we have done since 1982. 
uh, up until recently, of course, with COVID. Um, so it's just been a remarkable journey. And I, I, I blame it on Maryland magic. <laughs> yeah. so, so much came to me that I didn't even have to seek out. Uh, people that knew her started finding out and coming and it, it was an amazing uh, thing to happen. Well, you know, it's so true, Greg, because, you know, for me, I, I was kind of, uh, I fell into it, so to speak. It wasn't that I fell in love with Marilyn. I love Some Like It Hot. It was always been and still will be my favorite comedy of all time, right? Yeah. Uh, when I was a little girl, talking about, you were talking about Mon Monroe, Illinois, my best friend in first grade, one of my best friends, Lorna, and I dressed up for Halloween. She She's a blonde, so she was Marilyn Monroe. I was Natalie Wood. Fast forward, I'm going, you know, so there's little bits and pieces of her kind of hanging around and not realizing it. Then I meet you in this, you know, kind of search for Marilyn. And here's the thing. Once she comes into your kind of vibration or energy field, that magnetic personality that was here on Earth, you feel it. You see, She then pops up everywhere. Yeah. It's <laughs> Yep, you're you're hooked once once. <laughs> I I always say sometimes you know I know more about her than I know about some of my most closest people in my life you know <laughs> and I I've never been that way about any other celebrity so she's just so I find her very fascinating, multi-dimensional and I love the fact that you can't put her in a box. Not at all. I mean, witness that I have many hundreds of books on her written by various people. I don't know of any celebrity that has that kind of, of backing with books that she does. And of course, they're all different takes and most of them aren't worth reading, but you get so many different angles on Marilyn with each book and it's just amazing that that much could be written about someone who only lived 36 years. Uh, how, how can you do that? But somehow she has, in, has really endeared herself to so many people. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things we're wanting to do with the podcast and Behind the Icon is to really be able to shed light on the remarkableness of who she was and the fact that in her 36 years, she probably lived more than some people live into 96 years old. I mean, she had that ability. And if you think about her roots of where she came from, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, there's such a, a wonderful story of resilience and perseverance and the ability to envision a future <laughs> and be so fragmented at the same time. And uh, I find that really fascinating. I want to ask you, though, I want to go back a little bit about her reading, because I think most people, not the, the true Marilyn fans that know a lot about her, but for the average Joe, they a lot of times perceive her as that character Marilyn Monroe. And yet, so that that character is the ditzy blonde, dumb blonde, etc. Now she was far from it. So tell us why, and tell us a little bit about what she read and how smart she was. Well, Marilyn's education ended um, before she graduated from high school, so she did not have a formal education. But her mind was always actively seeking out the very best to read, and and she would would read the most amazing philosopher books and not fiction, but really heavy duty stuff. And, and she even took a course at UCLA in art history. Wow. So she was really interested in making herself as intelligent as she could. She really wanted to not be a dumb blonde at all. Um, unfortunately, the studios put her in a lot of movies like that because that's what sold and, and uh, she, sort of um, had to take on that image, but it was not her at all. Uh, that's the last thing she was, was dumb. She was a very smart lady indeed. And, yeah, she, uh, Yeah, you know, she, she certainly was. And, and uh, she can converse with some of the smartest minds in the world. Yeah, too. witness the people that adored her. Carl Sandburg was just wow. totally enamored of her, as was Dame Edith Sitwell, another incredibly legendary uh, scholar of, of that era. And that wouldn't have happened if she didn't have the kind of brain that they would have been uh, attracted to. You but know, she held her own. Yeah, she really did. And also, you know, a lot of times people don't understand this too. You can't 
say, you know, start calling the shots, start st standing up to studio heads, creating your own production company, et cetera, with Milton Green and not have a little bit up there, especially during that time. Yep. Uh, what would you like to say in terms of that? Because I think she was actually pretty smart in terms of how she crafted her career. Yeah, I think she, she always had a focus of where she was heading. And um, unfortunately, she had to fight the studios to, to get there because they were only going to see her as a certain kind of image because it was making the money, which I understand. They want to, when you get a good thing going, you don't want to change it and hope and keep it, uh, you want to keep it the way it was because it, it works. But she really wanted more in her life. That's why she studied so much. Uh, that's why she went to study with some of the great acting coaches along the way um, because she wanted to improve herself constantly. And I think that she was still at the time of her death working on getting herself into a better career. That was her last film under contract. And then I suspect she would have been more independent and chosen probably vehicles that would have shown her off in a, in a, in a way that she wanted to be shown off. Um, even her last picture, she wasn't a dumb blonde anymore. Uh, something's got to give. She, uh, even though it was a frothy kind of comedy, at least it wasn't the dumb blonde image. No, she was a mother, and this, uh, this is something that we all know that she craved to become. Do you believe that if she had a choice at 36, you know, the 20 year old might be different than the 36 year old. But if she had the choice between becoming a mom at that point in her life or being the huge movie star, what do you think she'd choose? I think she'd want both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, have it all, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I, that's a hard to say. I couldn't answer that because I don't yeah. know. But, I mean, she absolutely really wanted to be a mom, um, but she also really wanted to have a career. She really enjoyed the movie star status and, and, and working that way. Um, I would not know for sure, but yeah. uh, she enjoyed them both. And it's, it's a shame that she was not able to, to, to have, have the ability to be a mother. She tried certainly and had several miscarriages, but yeah. um, was never able to have a baby. Yeah, that I, I certainly, particularly towards the end of her life and the end of her marriage, I think that was a very hard time for her uh, as well. What do you say to people that say, because I get this a lot from people, they'll say something like, oh, she, it was just such a tragedy. It's such a tragedy. She's so tragic. What would you say to that as a as a response? Well, certainly there's the tragic element of her life. But if you look at her overall 36 years, it's a triumph that she came from a very humble background of, of basically an orphanage and no training in acting or singing or dancing or any of that and made herself into literally the, the most important movie star of all time. That's a triumph in every respect and she took what she had and, and made 190% of what she had uh, into something really spectacular and and had the um, ability to to really know what to do with her life. Um, she made mistakes. We all make mistakes along the way, and, and probably some of her choices for friends were not the best choices, but she also had a lot of great friends along the way, too. And um, no, I think most of her life was pretty wonderful. I'm not sure she was able to appreciate how wonderful it was sometimes, as, as we all are, uh, I think. So we don't understand how much we're loved and how much we are cared for and how successful we have really been. And yeah. I think it's hard being at the top of the heap like she was. Um, that's a hard life. Where do you think she got that strength? Because I'm looking at her background and that's a really... A uh, difficult place to be. What, how would you answer that question in terms of there might not even be one answer to answer it, but what, what are your feelings on that? Well, I, th I think that she was instilled early in life with um, a, a good sense of morality. And that may have come a lot from the Bolander family, which she stayed with as a child, uh, about being a good person. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I think that sort of stayed with her her whole life that that she wanted to be a good person and whether that not necessarily a Christian or Jewish or whatever but just that to have that good morality that you are a good person you don't hurt other people you're because she loved to help people and and she she loved animals and mm -hmm. she loved uh, the nature and the world it was so many things that that she always always working for and, and the charities that she wanted to be a part of um, that's somebody that's got a good heart and a good soul inside of them and, and I think part of that may have come again from her time with the Bolanders who were fairly religious people but not overly strict in the sense of being uh, domineering they, they just introduced that to them yeah yeah I think that's uh you know that's that's certainly part of it as well and then her ability like you said about animals but civil rights talking about issues that I could imagine back in the 40s 50s and 60s probably were never talked about his father knows best and you know keep everything squeaky clean and she's right, right. expressing stuff that absolutely that nobody was talking about she went out of her way to I mean I remember there's at visiting orphanages in other cities and embracing these black children that were at the orphanage, which was unheard of. You just didn't do that. Um, and and she, she she made sure that that racial equality and, 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 and so many other things were a part of her life, that, that she, she she didn't do it by hitting people over the head. She just did it. And, she just did it. You're so right. There's a, a episode that we have called Soul Sisters that deals with the Hotel Dell and this production manager that came through and said that the hotel is not going to let your your assistant maid come with you, which is African American or Negro, as they called at the time, right? And she said, basically, she comes, I come. She doesn't come, I don't come. And I thought, wow, you know, that's a really powerful thing. And she didn't do it in a mean way. She just basically said, look, you know, there's no reason why she can't. And so, you know, you think about some like it hot that at the time, you know, with Billy Wilder. You know, that was a pretty groundbreaking movie because you're talking about, you know, really uh, stretching the boundaries of that time period. And yet in the hotel itself at that time, uh, black people were not allowed in the hotel. And I think, wow, you know, the fact that she said, no, nope, I'm going to, you know, uh, Ida Mae has to come with me, you know, and I, I think. You know, people don't see that strength because I certainly look at that resilience. I always look at people that are successful in their life and I look at where they came from. And I go, well, if you started here and you just moved here, you know, and you might have had everything given to you. And that's great. You're successful in society standards. However, if you started with all this challenge and the fact that you moved way over here, I mean, that is just mind boggling sometimes how people can pivot themselves to this new reality and yet also be trapped by it too, because the very thing that she created was the very thing that she wanted to kind of move away from as she got older and not have to be typecast in that dumb blonde role. Now, that's one of the many, many reasons we love her. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, over the years, because you started back in 1982, there were a lot of people still alive. And unfortunately, as, as time goes on, each passing year, somebody that actually knew her is gone. So in the early days, though, there was many people that still were alive that knew her. What are some of the things that you heard over the years firsthand from these people that kind of describe who is Marilyn Monroe? Well, I think of of her husband, Jim Daughtery, who we had as a guest. And he just um, only knew the Norma Jean, really. Mm -hmm. But even as Norma Jean, he adored her. And um, though the marriage did not work out for many, many reasons, uh, he had nothing but wonderful things to say about her and, and how naive she was when she was younger. Uh, there was an innocence there, but already that same quality about love for everyone was there and he told me one time that when it was raining outside there were, was a pasture outside the house and she brought the cow in the house to get it out of the rain <laughs> the cow in the house oh my gosh i've never heard house. that he came home to find a cow in his living room 
But, okay, uh, that's Marilyn. You know? Oh my gosh, that is such a great story, Greg. That is hysterical. <laughs> I, that would be something I would do too. It's like we got to get the cow house, yeah, and, the cow and, out of the rain. Well, she didn't know. I mean, she was a young kid at that time. She was not 16 when she married him. So yeah, she's yeah a little naive that way. And and he mentioned about her cooking. But she didn't really know how to cook, but she, she liked colorful things. So she would make a lot of peas and carrots because they look so pretty on the plate. Oh. You know, just things like little things like that are, are I think, charming. Um, then there were people like B.B. Goddard, who uh, grew up with her a little bit. And and all the fun adventures that they had together. They they said that there was a, um, a, a drive-in movie theater near them when they were living in the valley. And they couldn't afford to go to it, but they would go up to the wall and there was like a knot hole in the wall and they would take turns looking through it to watch the movie. I mean, things like that to me, to say, this is a real Marilyn. This is a real person that's having a wonderful life and, and she's doing great girl things that you want her to do as a young girl. Oh yeah. You know, I just, uh, those are fun, uh, you know, uh, tidbits about her because I think sometimes we have to live vicariously through the people that actually did know her as well and even though you didn't get a chance to meet her live being with her all these years and having such a love and a warmth uh, in your heart Greg of Marilyn and that's one of the things that always stands out for me I mean what um, honoring in you to honor her legacy as you have all these years as we move into the 60th i cannot believe the 60th anniversary of her death and look at we're still talking about her as if she's still here and maybe she is in this conversation <laughs> who knows <Very> possible <laughs> having having uh you know that that kind of presence uh still here on earth even though physically uh not here well, i remember susan strasberg told me that when she died her spirit started spinning outward and it just keeps going further and further every year encompassing the entire world it, so, it, it, it you know that is so true she is a worldwide phenomenon and yet i think too like you uh i think you can say oh i'm attracted to her because she was a glamorous movie star i can talk to her because she's so beautiful i could i love her in her movies she's a great actress but i think one of the and all of those a contribute uh, contribute to who Marilyn Monroe is but I think the reason why 60 years later she's still with us in our hearts is because right now I think more than ever here on earth we are needing our hearts more than our head mm -hmm. and that connection that I think people can always relate to is I just want to love and to be loved and when you are wanting that self-acceptance in yourself and wanting that, I think she alluded that honesty and authentic expression, that childlike quality, but also that deep soul, which is the contradiction of, of who she is, like all of us that are human. And that's one of the things that I think that really stands out for me. Uh, what for you, if you were to say to me and and this is a hard question, by the way, I know it's going to be a hard question for you. But if you were to describe who Marilyn Monroe is in three words, what would you say? Loving, beautiful spirit. I would say both here on Earth and in the other plane, wherever that is, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I, I, I hope she's looking down from heaven and going, I, I so appreciate everything that's being done for me on this planet still. Because um, I don't know that she did appreciate it when she was here, because I don't know that she was aware of how very special she really, really was. Um, and maybe and, she does now. And still, 60 years later. Look at the effect that she still has. And, uh, you know, as as we always close out a lot of our interviews is, as we say, hold a good thought for Marilyn, but definitely hold a good thought for yourself. So thank you, Greg Schreiner, for being with us today. I had a ball. Thank you. <laughs>